Today I'm going to make hot cross buns. Well, hot cross buns with a slight difference. So it's Easter and I want to make hot cross buns, but also I want to bring in some elements of Cornish saffron buns as well. So what I'm going to make today is kind of like a collision of those two ideas. We're going to start off with 450 grams of plain flour. This is not bread flour, this is just regular flour. You can use strong flour, but it's just not necessary for this recipe. I've got a seven gram sachet of instant bread yeast. This is fast action yeast, so it doesn't need to be activated or anything. We just add it straight to the dry ingredients. I want 50 grams of soft brown sugar. Because although this is a bread, it's a very sweet loaf. I want 150 grams of raisins and candied peel. I just happen to have this mixed fruit here, which is a mixture of raisins and sultanas and candied orange peel. If you don't like candied peel, you can leave it out. So 150 grams of this. And then we're going to have clotted cream. In case you don't know what clotted cream is, it's kind of halfway between butter and cream, but it's also cultured. So it's halfway between butter and creme fraiche. And I'm just going to have a nice, probably two tablespoons full of clotted cream into the mix. Now I'm just going to take a knife and combine those ingredients. And especially the cream, I need to kind of cut that up into the dough. So if you can see what I'm doing there, I'm going to find that other big chunk of clotted cream and just cut through it gently with the knife. It doesn't matter too much because we will be needing this once it comes together as a dough. So I'm also going to add some butter. I've got some nice Cornish butter here. I'm going to melt 50 grams of that and add that into the dough. Okay, so 50 grams of butter melted and we'll just work that in as well just to distribute it before we mix the wet ingredients or the wetter ingredients in. And then just one egg. And again, we'll just break that up and mix it in. Now I've got 250 ml of milk flavored with saffron. We'll just do a quick flashback and show how that came about. Before we do anything else, I just need to infuse the saffron into the milk. So I've got 250 ml of whole milk here, and then we're gonna put saffron in. So I've got a very generous pinch of saffron there, about half a teaspoon full of strands. I'm just gonna kind of crush those as I sprinkle them into the milk. And now I'm just going to warm this milk to help that saffron infuse. So I'm just going to warm that ever so gently. And I don't think you can see on camera how yellow this is from the saffron, but it's like a custard yellow at the moment. I don't need to boil this milk because we're, well, we just don't need to do that. So just going to heat it until it starts to steam and then we'll set it aside and let it cool down to blood heat, which is basically body temperature. So to test that, once it's cooled down, use a thermometer or stick your finger in there. And when it's cooled down to blood heat, you basically won't feel any temperature change when you put your finger in the liquid. But you can see there's still color coming out of that saffron and flavor, obviously. The little strands of saffron are still surrounded by streaks of darker yellow in the milk. I can hear it starting to bubble on the bottom of the milk. And so I'm actually just gonna turn that off now. And that's all I need. So it's just gently steaming. I'm going to set that aside until it cools right down. So the milk with the saffron, just going to make sure I don't waste a single bit of this, goes into the middle of the dough. Look at that colour. And then with the knife, we'll just bring that together into a dough. It's quite a wet dough at this stage, but that's not a thing to worry about too much because the fruit will soak up some of this moisture. The dried fruit will absorb some of the moisture out of this dough, but also it has the flour soaks up the liquid the dough will thicken a little bit on its own obviously if you've got a dough mixer that'd be the way to go with this and then you wouldn't have to worry about what i'm doing which is trying to dig down to the bottom to get the dough so that's had quite a good mix already just by virtue of me digging that dry flour out the bottom of the bowl and now i'm just going to cover that and leave it for half an hour to rise a little bit i almost forgot a level teaspoonful of ground mixed spice. Really should have added that in with the dry ingredients, but it'll be fine to mix in now, especially as we're going to knead further before we bake. Okay, about 20 minutes have passed and the dough has started to rise a little bit. 
So I'm going to turn that out onto a floured surface and give it a knead. So just give it a bit extra flour so it's not too sticky to handle. And it's a nice soft dough so it kneads very easily. And if at any point in this kneading process it starts to feel a bit too sticky, we just add a bit more flour. But this is actually feeling pretty good. And we should get a nice rise. That's enough kneading. Back into the bowl. And we'll leave that until it's doubled in size. Another half hour. Dough has doubled in size. That's good. Now we can form that into buns. So I've just got a baking tray. And... I'm going to give that a light coating with oil because a light coating of oil on my hands will help me to knead this dough without adding extra flour. So I'm just going to knock, going to knock that back now and just knock some of the air out of it. And we're not going to be too rough with it, but just knead it until it deflates a little. Now I need to divide that into 12 pieces. So the way to do that is quarters and then we'll divide each quarter into three. And this will make fairly smallish buns, but hot cross buns probably shouldn't be massive. And then to form the buns, all I'm going to do is take a lump of dough like that, just make a cage over it with my hands and we roll it round into a little bun. And I'm just arranging these on the tray with a little bit of gap in between them. I'm just gonna cover those up with a piece of cling film that I've very lightly oiled. I'm not really a great fan of using plastic like this, but I haven't found a better way for hot cross buns. So we need to leave these for half an hour or again until they've doubled in size. Meanwhile, we're gonna prepare the pastry for the crosses and the glaze. I've got an unwaxed lemon here and I'm going to take the zest off of that. This is a lemon zester. If you don't have one of these, you can use a grater. And this zest is going to go into the pastry that goes to make the crosses on top, and the juice is going to go in the glaze. So I'm just going to chop that up really finely. And this lemon zest is going to go into a small bowl. Right, so the juice of the lemon goes in there. Tiny little bit more saffron, and then I'm going to go for about five teaspoons full to, of white sugar. The actual amount is not all that critical, but I'm just going to keep on stirring that until that sugar's dissolved. I'm not going to heat this. It's going to be a cold syrup that goes over the top of the buns as soon as they come out of the oven. So 20 minutes later, you can see the buns have almost joined together now. They're still rising a little bit. They need a little bit longer, but now's the time to prepare the dough for the crosses on top. So into the bowl that's got the lemon zest in there, we're going to put about 100 grams of flour. And I'm just going to mix in those dry ingredients to get that lemon zest mixed into the flour. And then I'm adding cold water. And the amount of water here is dependent on what kind of flour you're using. But we're looking to make a kind of slightly runny dough. So I'll show you the consistency we're aiming for rather than the actual amount of water. I think that could stand to be a little bit thicker actually so I'm just going to add a tiny bit more flour. Yeah so that's the final consistency for this for the dough for the crosses. It wouldn't stand as a dough but it doesn't quite pour so it's kind of lumpy batter. So we're going to pipe this mixture onto the hot cross buns immediately before they go in the oven. So I've just got a sandwich bag here. If you've got a piping bag, you could use that. But I've got a sandwich bag that I've put inside a mug here, secured with a rubber band. And we're just going to put that cross dough into the bag there. Gather that up and we'll tie it off. You could use a twist tie if there's not much of the neck of the bag left. 
I think I managed to get all of that. So there we go, we've got our bag of dough. We're gonna put that on the buns at the very last minute before they go in the oven. The oven is up to temperature and the buns have just nicely risen so that they're just touching each other at the edges, which is perfect. Now I'm just gonna snip the tiniest little corner off of this bag. It doesn't really need much and it's important to make sure that you know where that little bit of plastic went. Make sure that didn't go in your buns. And then I'm going to gently squeeze a line of dough straight across like that. And another line of dough straight across in the opposite direction, or rather in the perpendicular direction. There. And that's going to go straight into the oven now for 20 minutes. Okay, so 20 minutes at 200 Celsius and look at my lovely buns. And while they're still hot, brush on the lemon glaze. Brush it all over them. It's important to do this while, it, while they're still hot because it will soak in and also the heat will evaporate some of the water and it will make it into a proper sticky sugary glaze. So we'll give them a coat of that. It will probably soak in and go dull and I'll give them another coat in a minute as they cool down. The crosses on these have gone a little bit more blobby than I probably would have preferred. So a slightly stiffer dough, more flour, slightly less water, would have given us fine, more finely defined crosses than this. But I think job's still a good one. So I have to wait overnight to taste these because it's actually Saturday today and I'm making these for Sunday morning, for Easter Sunday morning. Video editing, you don't have to wait. So here comes that bit now. Okay, time to taste one of these. So just got it sliced and lightly toasted and they look great. So they're really nice and light and even textured inside. And I've got the rest of this clotted cream here. So I'm gonna use that instead of butter. I've got some nice berries and cherries jam here. So hot cross saffron buns with clotted cream and berry and cherry jam. Let's give that a taste. It looks really good. Mm. I think these are slightly richer than a standard hot cross bun on account of the clotted cream that we put into the dough. But yeah, they're really good. So warm hot cross bun cool clotted cream and zingy jam. Fantastic. And the saffron flavor is there, but not overwhelming. It's just really nice, kind of warm spiciness in the background. So I'm super, super happy with those. There'll be recipe notes in the video description in text form if you need them. And I'm just gonna enjoy my other half a hot cross bun here. So a very happy Easter. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.